Welcome back to Isaac Rebirth. This is episode 13, and now we're gonna play as the new character we have unlocked. Uh huh? But his more accurate name will be more Blue Baby. And essentially, Blue Baby is Isaac who suffocated in the chest and is now undead. And we're having a really good start into this game. Sad bombs is always a good item to have. So, in the original Isaac, Blue Baby was pretty much the challenge character of the game. This was the character that you wanted to pick if you wanted the game to give you a beating and make you work in order to deserve your victory, because he definitely was the hardest character in the game to play. As you've noticed, he doesn't start with any red heart containers, and he's not going to be able to gain any red heart containers during the entire game. Yeah, when I was saying that Sad Bombs was powerful, I was not kidding. And we got the Torn Photo, which is one of the best boss items that you can have into this game because it increases both your tear firing speed and the speed of your tears. So, all in all, it makes you really efficient at attacking things. So, what about Blue Baby in terms of character? Considering that so far, all that we've said is he cannot have red hearts. Well, if he gains a red heart, then it will just become a blue heart, so there's no way for him to gain any definite heart containers. Other than that, his stats are average. They're pretty much the same as Isaac, only though he has a very slight increase in damage. An increase as in, Isaac multiplies all damage by 1, Blue Baby multiplies it by 1.05. Also, now we got an item that we're going to treasure during this run. Yeah, Anarchist Cookbook plus Sad Bombs mean that whenever you'll use it, an entire room will pretty much die. You can guarantee with that with this one item, we're going to be almost able to insta-kill every boss that we're going to see. And alternately, you can always use it whenever you're into a room with lots of junk to blow up. Like either poops, skulls, mushroom... All of the kind of thing like that, but right now we're going to save it for the bosses or for problematic rooms because it's going to spray the entire room with tears to the point where nothing will survive. Yeah, Leo has always been... Oh, wow. Okay, thanks, Leo. That was really good. <laughs> Always make sure to destroy those pots while you're at it, which is something that I fail to do here, but at this point it's just like... No, lightning cannot strike twice here. There's no way I'm going to get yet another pot with something like... $15 in it or so. No, that's not happening. But, yeah, while in the original Isaac, Blue Baby was the challenge character of the game, well, nowadays there's a character that does the job far better at being challenging to play, although not necessarily for a good reason. I probably should have donated money to the donation box, but come on. I cannot resist being able to make my anarchist cookbook spam a shitload of bombs every two rooms or so. Also, this will reroll all of our items, but... Honestly, at this point of the game, I feel very uncomfortable at re-rolling, so we're going to keep things on the way that they are. Oh, I knew that I should have destroyed those spots after all, so yeah, here's another 25 coins. Sometime you will find a quarter whenever you destroy a pot. Other than that, you will find these mostly into treasure rooms, and that's pretty much it, but most of the time I will find them in pots. Okay, let's time it carefully. Yeah, he never stood up. <laughs> oh, this is great. But, yeah, here's the part where the playthrough starts to become a little less great. The Devil Rooms, because as Blue Baby, since you cannot have Red Hot Containers, it means that every Devil Room item will cost three Soul Hearts. And that's honestly quite a lot. Right now it's half of my health and unless that you have an item that will guarantee you have soul hearts or anything, you gotta be careful. You gotta spend them with a very huge uh, 
caution, because you never really know if you're going to recuperate from the health hit that you're going to have. There's a bunch of items that are really good with this character. Essentially, Holy Mantle is good because it will allow you to prevent some of the damage that you take. The Habit is also awesome because it replaces most of the hearts with Soul Hearts. Dark Bomb will also do a fine job because he's going to replace all of your red hearts into blue ones and sometimes even black ones. Now, this boss might be hard to one-shot because, yeah, it can just hide under the ground like that in order to avoid everything. And yeah, I'm not done with this floor or anything, but I wanted to go here just in the likelihood that I got a, a devil room, but I didn't. Okay, so... Honestly, with this one experimental treatment, I have no clue what the hell even happened here, so... Who knows if I'm better or not, but... I think I slightly increased my damage, so all in all, I think it's a good thing. So, I'm going to go and guess that what suffered was probably range or maybe luck. Who knows. But either way, we're really on our way in order to win. Oh, okay, so I guess we're going to fire tears even faster. Yeah, we're firing tears pretty much at the maximum speed that we can do with regular items. I mean, if we had stuff like the Sad Onion and maybe Cancer or Capricorn, which will decrease your tier delay, then we will be able to shoot even faster. Soy Milk will also increase our speed, but it's not as if it will make us even faster at doing what we're doing. Also, this room kind of sucks. I mean, you just have to wait here forever for the flying enemies to come near you, and sometimes it can be even worse because yeah, right now we're fighting a Teratoma, but some other time it's just going to be those gigantic host enemies that take forever in order to fly all across the room, will spawn a bunch of flies in order to be even bigger in your sense. So yeah, this room kinda sucks. Alright, it's time to get forever items, considering that we ha now have the Humble Bundle, or the Humbling Bundle, but it just sounds really weird to me every single time that I say it. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean, it will be also a nice item, but right now the Anarchist Cookbook wins, just because of its sheer stupidity of how overpowered it is right now. Also, I always found that the enemies that just spawn legs like that, I mean, like the hoes or the egg sacs or whatever the hell they're supposed to be, they just look really strange. Honestly, I've never been a fan of them. More so the freaking skeleton that outright refused to die all of the time. And yeah, I could use my anarchist cookbook for that, but I'd rather save it for the final encounter of this... Uh, Oh, okay, that's right. I guess we don't need that, we only need one bomb, but... At this point, I there really was no point in order to save up on my Anarchist cookbook because the entire floor was done, so in the end I just wasted a bomb that could have been used in a better way. Alright, it's time to play the shell game because, remember, we need to give him enough coin... Okay, that's not what's going to help me get coins in order for this thing to eventually be useful. And yeah, blood donation machine as the blue baby, very bad idea because, as you can guess, you have no red hearts. Bible tract, however, is a very good trinket to have as the blue baby because it gives you a higher chance to get eternal hearts and at the end of a round, whenever you'll have an eternal heart ready, it'll become a blue heart, so... All in all, very powerful because it can give you a whole lot more health by replacing the red hearts that do absolutely nothing with soul hearts. Well, not soul hearts, but eternal hearts that will eventually become a proper heart. In order for you to lose your eternal heart, you need to lose your entire health, so usually it's free health. Uh, and now this is so fun. We can take this playthrough so slow now that we have the scatter because these enemies are so slow. Yarofent is also a very good thing to have because, yep, more soul hearts. 
And on the opposite spectrum, the Lovers is going to be a completely worthless card, unless that you find this power hub that you're just going to ignore because we've already seen what it does. And I honestly have no desire to replicate the experience again. At least not right now. There is a challenge where we're going to be able to replay by using a Strange Attractor, which is the thing that makes your tears magnetic, but it's not gonna happen right now. And yeah, this just really gave us a hand in tow making uh, our supply of gold really wealthy because holy shit. Yeah, whenever you have Humble Bundle, unless that you're really unlucky, you're not gonna have any kind of problems with items for the rest of the game. And things escalate furthermore if you somehow manage to get Mom's key on top of it, which will make all of the chests give you even more items than usual. At this point, it just becomes overly ridiculous as to how much items you can get in only one chest. Also, my character just seems to have very conflicted emotions right now. He's crying, and yet he's very happy despite having two picks that are pretty much piercing his eyes, which are making his tears all bloody and disgusting, and which are making them really, really fast. Also, Hematomesis, once again, is only going to be useful if we can get our hands into a super secret room, which will have either Black Hearts or Eternal Hearts, so this is not a priority for you to have at any given point. One thing which is pretty important to master in this game is to being able to dodge the Skull Jerks because you never really know whenever they'll throw bones at you in a certain manner so you really need to anticipate their attacks in order to preserve your health. Sometimes it can get really messy. Yep, I'm sorry I'm not gonna take the magic fingers because at this point the book just rings supreme right now. And beside, my damage is not that high, so it's really more convenient for me to use the bombs and have the sad bombs do their work instead of just using the magic fingers, which just slightly increase the damage that we deal right now. So at this point, it's just going to be a waste of money, even though that right now we have all the money in the world. If we can get our hand on more damage, then it's going to be useful, but right now it's completely useless. Right, let's hope that- oh, okay. The bombs did not really go at a very fortunate place, but who cares, because Gertie is still almost dead regardless. That's how powerful sad bombs are, especially if you have five of them on the screen all at once. Okay, so all of a sudden, the magic fingers will have been very useful with all of the damage that we're getting, and now we're getting the mark of the devil. Definitely a good pickup for Blue Baby, or, well, anyone else for that matter, because it increases your damage, you get a slight boost in speed, and finally it gives you a soul heart back, so no matter how much health you have as, a, as the Blue Baby, then you're going to be able to buy it, because it's just going to refill you back to at least one heart, so therefore you're not going to die if you pick this up. Oh, I knew that I should have bought this, because, yeah, you need to pick up items in order for them to not spawn anymore. We just saw it earlier into the shop, and here it is again, one floor later into a, a treasure room. But now things have changed. The magic fingers are now worthwhile, because I deal a shitload of damage now. And it's also a perfect opportunity to go hunting for skulls. The Skull Division is here in order to protect the Greeded. Unfortunately, they did a very poor job. So, yeah, the plan that I'm going with right now, I skipped earlier Curse Room, and the reason for that is pretty clear. And that's because, well, we're going to try and get the achievement in order to beat the entire depth without taking any hits. Right now, I feel like I can do it because of how much firepower that I have, the damage that I have, firing speed, and finally, the magic fingers. At this point, I think we're just going to cheese this boss by spending our money on it. Oh, 
that probably would have been a good place in order to become Guppy. But with that said, that cat is very dangerous to get as a blue baby because whenever you pick it up, it'll bring you to only one soul heart. So it's very dangerous. Unless that you can get it at the beginning of the run, you probably shouldn't even get it because it's probably going to ruin your entire playthrough. As opposed to picking it with other characters, which will leave you with one red heart containers, but hey, you can counteract all of this by having enough blue hearts, but without any blue hearts, blue baby is entirely worthless. Also, yeah, don't mind me, I'm definitely not hunting for a crawl space right now. I do not want to show off the black market at some point, which is going to be achieved by destroying the shit out of every rock that we can see into our path. And hey, sometimes we get nice surprises. Yeah, normally these, uh, these enemies don't die that easily, so that should be a testament to how powerful my damage is right now. Usually you need to hit those things with something like close to 8 or 9 tiers at some point, so I'm really happy with how things are going. And we get a new item right over here. It's unfortunately not going to be of much use in this playthrough, but in other playthroughs this can be a very magnificent and powerful item. BFF makes all of the familiars around you bigger, and that means that right now the two flies that are orbiting around me are very big and therefore have a much better chance of blocking things. So it's not entirely wasted, but it will be a whole lot better if we could get our hands on a familiar, because this will double their damage. Alright, looks like we are done with this one floor. It's time to try and finish off this challenge of making it through the depths without getting hit. And once again it's at Necropolis and while BFF is kind of a fun thing to have, unfortunately it had the side effect of depriving me of my entire money. So it's really important right now that I get some money back. And I honestly doubt that greed is going to give me a hand, considering that I just spent all my money on the floor. As Blue Baby, Book of Revelations is a very powerful item because, hey, you can build up an infinite supply of soul hearts, which is going to be very useful with this one character, but... With this one character, however, I'll remain with magic fingers because I am very confident in the fact that I'm going to find money again at some point, so hopefully I will be able to bombard the hell out of every room just by pressing spacebar twice in order to clear out everything. This might be what will redeem this entire challenge because making it through Necropolis, overpowered character or not, is still a pretty tricky affair because we still have all of the worst baddies of the entire game for the most part, at least for this one part of the game. And yeah, one of these days I will figure out how to spot the rocks into the depths. You always gotta look for the little X mark on side of it, and holy shit I almost got hit here. That was a little bit too close for comfort. Honestly, whenever it comes to a no hit challenge, I don't remember if you're even allowed to take devil deals, so this is something that we're gonna have to take a look about. Yeah, there's a rock up here which we can... Uh, destroy but honestly I want to stay clear of it because there's also a bomb right beside it. This will be a very bad thing if our challenge came to an end just because of a uh, bumbling incompetence. But hey in the meantime this is also something which is not going to be too shabby. Crying bombs because our tears are doing a lot of damage right now so we definitely are happy with what we've got going right here. And honestly, I'm not even sure if there were still some stuff that I wanted to see in this one floor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we still have to see pretty much anything. Yeah, we're going to do this one very slow and cautious. It's really easy to get hurt by the red fireplaces that are all over the room. And considering that I have Leo, I'm also going to release a shitload of hosts that are just going to start attacking me like this, so I also gotta be careful about that, so yeah, just trap everyone in a corner and everything will be all fine and dandy. 
Okay, so the shop and the treasure room were all next to each other, so this is always something good. And too bad that the payoff was not worth it in the slightest. So, alright, let's... Ah, unfortunately no greed, but considering that I spent all my money on the previous floor, I would have been surprised if that happened. Alright, I'm too lazy to check out the rest of the skull, so let's just go to mom before we run out of time. I think we've hit the 18 minute mark or so, and I still want to go and attempt the boss rush in order to get the collectible item as this character. Considering that it's a very good one, so might as well do it. Now it's only a matter of time. In 10 seconds... Ah, oh, no! God damn it, I was very careless here. I fucked up my challenge at the very last second. Oh my god, so yeah, I guess the only thing that we can do right here is just to get revenge on Krampus as compensation, and nope. Sorry, but right now magic fingers prevails over your big fat head. Okay, so yeah, soy milk or Sagittarius? Yeah, we're gonna pick Sagittarius because it's piercing shot, so now we're a real powerhouse for sure. Considering all that we have, the boss rush is not going to take too long this time around. And honestly, soy milk would have been a pretty bad value because the speed of my tears is already pretty fast as it is right now. And hurry for making it so that we'll be able to do the entire boss rush without having any red poop in the way. If you can get it to charge at you or her to charge at you, you can just put bombs in the mouth of, it, of the Carrion Queen in order to speed up the fight. And piercing helps a whole lot because then you can also hit her tail a whole lot easy. And yeah, let's hear it for having our first eternal heart thank to the Bible tract. Hopefully it won't be the last, but yeah, you can see our white heart is at the total end of our health bar, so... We'd have to be very careless in order to be able to lose that health. Oh, alright, I will unleash very slow explosive death toward you, blue baby. Honestly, I think either technology or piercing is probably the best thing that you can have for this entire boss rush, considering that you can hit every boss at the same time, and it gets even better if you have Brimstone. Let's not forget about it, but... Since it's a special item and most of the time it tends to be pretty discreet and everything, well, we're just going to stick with the more con common tools of the trade. Even though that for the most part, well, at least it was true in the original Isaac, I will never get the freaking technology. I got Brimstone over and over again, but never technology. Yeah, what do you know, we're already at the half of the boss rush. That's what piercing does for you. I need to stress it over and over again because this is how amazing it is. So essentially you have three items I think which give you piercing tears. You have Sagittarius, you have Cupid's arrow, and finally you have the Dead Onion, which honestly is the worst of the three because of how much it destroys your range, but I guess that's the price that you have to pay in order to also have uh, spectral tears uh, combined with piercing. It can be really powerful, but holy shit, you need to get your, the shot of your tears all the way back up. Also, I'm pretty sure that Gish is invulnerable to Monstro 2's laser, so... All in all, this will always be the most biggest slug event of the boss rush. These two sack of it points that refuse to die. So it's always a good thing whenever you get to this wave and then it's the complete opposite. You get two of the bosses that have the worst health, and once again, piercing makes complete work of pin because you hit every single one of its segments all at once. The same applies for uh, the Hollows, Larry, and a whole lot of other segmented bosses. I think Chubb is also a part of this number, but yeah, usually it's not really a big deal in itself. Also a fun thing with Blue Baby, since you have no red heart, it makes it so that the item that we have, aka the negative, will always trigger whenever you get hit, so every single time you get hurt, all the enemies will be hit for 40 damage. And eventually we'll unlock the Polaroid, but we need to go back to the Cathedral a bunch in order to be able to finally do that, and 
Right now I kind of want to wrap up the dark room first, because it's usually the bigger hassle and it's honestly much less fun. I'd prefer going from the dark room to the chest than the opposite. But yeah, eventually we'll unlock the Polaroid and what it does is, when you get knocked down to half a red heart, you become invincible for like 5 seconds. Yep. That means that the moment that you have that as Blue Baby, you will get invulnerability every single time that you get hit. So how about that? This is a great item indeed. And with that said, it's almost time for this boss rush to come to an end. Everyone is dead, and we got the Blue Baby's only friend, and... Yeah, we've successfully went through the depth a good couple of times, which means that now we can fight Gish in the depth as a regular hand-level boss, instead of having to fight him during the boss rush itself. And hurry, I miss yet another rock that I call bomb. So now I have Monstro's Long, and with the high damage output that I have, that's essentially a win mode right now, because everything will pretty much instantly die upon getting hit. I won't even need the coins anymore in order to trigger the magic fingers. I honestly don't need them anymore. Just barfing at things very violently is going to solve every problem, but hey, don't mind if I get any more money, thank you very much. Oh, thanks, room. I really appreciate it. Usually, I kind of get excited whenever I get three cursed chests like that, because it usually means that you'll get something good out of the process, but wow, that was the worst load that I could ever have. So, yeah, I almost regret saying that playing as Blue Baby was the game's challenge mode, but... It was challenging in the Flash game, alright? It just happened that every single item that I had was completely useful in my favor, with the exception of maybe one or two that we didn't pick up, and wow, that was almost an end to our challenge right here. We might have failed to have finished the depths without taking a hit, but we're going to finish the wound without taking a hit, so this is why, once again, we're not going to go into the curse room, because that will mean damage. Oh, so there's a locked door to the left. Whenever you get a locked door into the womb like that, that only means it's a library. Or it has two locks and, well, it's a room with items or something random. Also, hooray for not reading my map properly. So, we just picked up the Book of Secrets and this is by far the most underwhelming book of the entire game. Every six rooms or so, you will be able to get the map of the current level... Oh my! Ah, no! What the hell was that? God, that was such a moronic way to fail this challenge. I just cannot believe it. Oh my god. Oh, okay, so thank you for bringing me all the way back here. So in order to finish elaborating on the Book of Secrets, if you enable it, it will either reveal you the map like the treasure map would, it will either put icons on your map, like the compass, or it will reveal the secret areas of the level, the blue map. So yeah, all in all, it's an inferior version of all of the three items that we have. You never know whatever you'll have, and most of the time, it will be something that we can pretty much entirely ignore. Yeah, Broken Anki is kind of redundant, because... If we were holding it, it would mean we'd have 20% chance to be reborn as ourselves. So once again, the Bible Tract is the item to keep. It didn't give us a whole lot of eternal hearts, but at least it happened at some point. Also, I have no clue how the hell this enemy even survived. Oh, speaking of the devil, here they are again. Alright, so I guess at this point, unfortunately, there is no more suspense remaining. You know that this loadout is going to win us the entire game, so it's all a matter of seeing what other item are we going to get in the way. Once again, this is a boss fight that will die really quickly. Mr. Fred really is not the most interesting boss, as you could see. Hell, I think it's one of the only bosses of the entire game that doesn't even move at all. 
And hurry for Synthoil because it's even more damage. Multiplied by our magic mushroom, so hurry. Now things are going to die even more. Good game. <laughs> yeah, the game is not even trying. They're like, nah, okay, you won. Enjoy your victory. You have all of the coins in order to win the game. And yeah, we have Bob's brain. And considering that we have BFF and we have sad bombs, well, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, just look at how it's going to obliterate things. And with sad bombs, it's also going to explode into projectiles, as we've established into yet another update previously. And the brain being bigger means that it's also going to be more efficient in... <laughs> At this point, I think I could win the game without even attacking anymore. I could just spend money and I probably could kill every single boss, but... At this point, it probably will be boring, so I'm just going to keep attacking, and I'm just going to spend my money on rooms that will be an asshole otherwise. Yep. Also, the projectiles of our sad bomb also are piercing, so whenever we get rooms like these, it makes it so that it'll be even less challenging. Also, I'm not entirely sure if the damage of Bob's brain is depending on Mr. Mega, which makes your bomb more powerful, or if it's influenced by BFF, which makes your familiar more powerful. I guess there's only one way to figure it out. Alright, now here is Mom's art for the last time of the entire Let's Play. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that BFF do change the damage of Bob's brain because it completely obliterated Mom's art. It drained half of itself in only one shot. And yeah, there goes the last bit of suspense of this playthrough. We can go on further because the Devil Room said so. Yup, this was our 11th victory against Mom's Art. And in order to celebrate, it unlocks It Lives, which now replaces Mom's Art as the final boss of the room. We're never going to see Mom's Art again, but don't panic or anything. It's just a replaced version of this boss, which is more challenging because it'll spawn boss characters in order to deal with you. But that's not the only change that we have to keep in mind now. Because of It Lives, it also means that the end game is no longer the womb. Whenever we'll kill it lives, it will spawn the trapdoor that will lead to Sheol, as well as the ray of light that will allow you to go to the cathedral. So, now we will be able to go to the cathedral as we please, so if we wanted to, we could start to work on our way to unlock the final location that we'll get through the cathedral, which is the chest, but... We might as well just stick to a certain order, and we're going to clear all of the dark room first. One hit. That's how powerful our character is right now. We can one-shot bosses for crying out loud. And this is not even mentioning what I'm going to do to Satan right now. Oh hey, they got an attack in. And if I use magic fingers, it wouldn't even have got a single attack in. And with this fight, we've managed to establish that Satan has two feet. Or hooves, or whatever you call these things. So yeah, let's go to the dark room with our new character. Forget me now is a very fun item to have. Oh, alright, I guess we have one last devil deal. Run baby is going to be nice because our flies that will come out of it are going to be really damn powerful. And Guppy Spawn, the flip side is completely worthless because you cannot get uh, any red heart containers in order to replenish your health. So, essentially, the only reason to pick up Guppy Spawn is in order to count toward your Guppy item limit. Yeah, Rotten Baby might have cost us three hearts, but the investment is going to be well worth it. Yeah, we 
always gotta keep in mind that the big things can be eaten by the small one if they're powerful enough. And yeah, I think this is something we didn't see the gate do the last time that we fought it, just because, for the most part, we managed to do a good job of killing the things that it spawns, but every single time that it shoots a brimstone lasers, it will home in toward its own minions, which will make a laser that will be almost impossible to dodge, unless that you're staying way out of the way of every single minion that it has, so... All in all, this boss kinda suck. <laughs> Especially whenever you have two of them. I'm pretty sure that if we didn't already get the achievement for clearing the final chapter without taking a hit, this would have been the character that would have done it because holy shit this character is way overpowered. Imagine if we somehow had Guppy. I had a chance to get Guppy earlier in the playthrough and I passed out on it and honestly I probably should have tried. Because just imagine having a constant stream of flies going all over the place as we're doing all of this. This would have been amazing. So if anything, playing as this character is the risk versus reward. You have to decide if the devil deals that you will get will be worth the three soul hearts that you will pour in on them. Sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. Oh, okay, never mind. I just got hit by a thing that never actually happened. I really hate daddy long legs because you never really know whenever this thing is just going to obliterate you for no good reason. So, welcome to the lamb. I was tempted to just spend my entire money in order to beat this boss, but come on. We have to make this fight formal, or maybe it would be the time to use our money. Nope. I have 74 coins and hopefully that'll be enough to buy us some gum whenever we'll go out of the store after killing the mother of all devils or whatever. So that's it, that's Blue Baby. That was supposed to be the challenging character but this run really was not on the challenging side at all. But hopefully you enjoyed this run regardless and let's move on to bigger things as we're now gonna have permanent access to Sheol and the Cathedral. And you reclaim your soul as a reward. That's it lives, this is what is going to replace mom's art. And with that said, we're not gonna have any more unlockables from the womb anymore, so we're gonna have to go all the way down to Sheol and beyond in order to get items. But in the meantime, we have two new challenges that have popped up because we unlock it lives. Let's start out with the first of them that got unlocked. Challenge 4, Darkness Falls. In the next video.